All right. The Lord, praise the Lord. How you doing? Everybody doing okay? I hope you are. God hates Halloween. He hates it with a passion, and every one of you that call yourselves Christians and participate in Halloween, you're wicked, you're rebellious, and you hate God. Wicked, rebellious, and you hate God. You and I are called to walk holy, walk in the holiness of God always at all times, and to bring Him glory. We are to be imitators of God, not imitators of the devil. Not imitators of whores and whoremongers. Not imitators of that which is wicked. Not imitators of satanic cartoons. Not imitators of satanic movies and movie characters. We are to be imitators of God. Jehovah God. We're told that. God hates Halloween. Hates it with a passion. This is only a date that belongs to Satan. Now, you and I, we have to live every October 31st. So every October 31st, we say, this is the day the Lord's made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I got a dear friend whose birthday is today. Praise God. Happy birthday, Aaron. But we know what this stands for, and we do the exact opposite of everything they do on this date. We don't even imitate them and put a Christian bumper sticker on it. We do not imitate the devil. We're commanded to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ye followers of me. Be followers of God. Be followers of Jesus. Do as he does. Do as he wills. Read his word. Know his heart. Can you see Jesus dressing up like Moses on Christmas, on Halloween? Who are you, Jesus? Who are you tonight? I'm Moses. Kind of absurd, isn't it? Kind of out there. Kind of jacked up, right? I don't see Jesus doing that. How about Jesus dressing up like the devil? Just one day, hey, here I am, Jesus. I'm the devil, y'all. <laughs> and just making laughter of it. God hates Halloween. Oh, but it's fine. I'm saved and grace covers it. God hates Halloween. He hates the devil. He hates demons. He hates all things satanic. It was sin that killed our Jesus. Why would you continue in sin? So grace may abound? Oh, I'm celebrating Jesus by celebrating the devil tonight. Grace, 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 grace. God forbids that thinking. We're told that in Romans chapter 6. God forbids that thinking. Do not think that way. We are here to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you celebrate Halloween, you celebrate the devil. You're celebrating the devil. If you celebrate Halloween, you hate Jesus Christ. You are in rebellion against him. Why do I say you hate Jesus Christ? Because he said you love me when you regard my word and do it. So if you don't regard his word enough to honor Jesus on Satan's day, you're going to go ahead and honor Satan on Satan's day? You're in rebellion. Rebellion is witchcraft. This day is perfect for you rebellious Christians who call yourselves Christians. So many of you pastors and youth pastors are involved in this. You do not know the God of heaven. I don't know that you're saved. I, I think you have placed your faith in a whole different Jesus. The Jesus of Satanism. The Jesus of America and American culture. The Jesus of America and American culture will send you straight to hell. North American culture send you straight to hell. Our Savior is one out of Nazareth, the Nazarene. That's what the devils refer to him as. They, they don't say Jesus. They call him the Nazarene. When you have a confrontation with them, the Jesus of Nazareth, they know who the real Jesus is. And if you are celebrating in any way, God has told you to come out of her, my people. You come out of Babylon. You come out of Satanism. You come out of the American way, the, the American lifestyle. You come out of that. Uh, you guys remember old Anton LaVey? He was doing an interview, and he said, I'm, I'm glad that Christian parents let their children worship Satan at least one day of the year. And he wasn't being funny, ha-ha funny. He was being serious, and he was putting the truth on people 
So when they would hear the devil say the truth and they continued to follow the devil, it's just greater judgment. Greater judgment. If you celebrate Halloween and don't have one ilk of conviction about it, the Holy Spirit's not there. Because he, his purpose is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's what he does. Now, it doesn't mean that you're, you're not going to sin. You're not going to practice Halloween. It means that when you do, there will be a weird vibe there because you are contradicting God. You are in rebellion to God and the Holy Spirit will not allow that to happen. And if you don't have any kind of conviction about this, you're wicked and you're probably still of your father, the devil, having chosen a different Jesus. And we are encouraging you. We are crying out. This is the last call. This is the last Halloween. Before the rapture, we believe. And you better not be practicing it, guys. We're here. We're shouting from the mountaintop to warn you, O sleeper, to wake up. Okay, wake up. Let's look at Ephesians 5 real quick before we continue on. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, honest, innocent children, not rebellious devils. I follow Jesus except on Halloween and Christmas. I spend a whole month worshiping the devil and Antichrist. Christ the Savior's born, you know. It's time that you Christians, we Christians, learn what is truth and what is honoring, what honors God, what elevates God, what makes Him feel welcome in our homes. It's not Christmas and Halloween and most Thanksgivings because people aren't giving thanks to Him on Thanksgiving in America. Their idols step forward there as well, and they're worshiping idols at Thanksgiving. Y'all need to check out my stuffing. My stuffing is bomb diggity. And you are concerned about your stuffing and the people. What about my deviled eggs? You need to try my deviled eggs, my deviled eggs. I got that recipe a long time ago from my great grandmother and you need my deviled eggs. And everybody's turned everything at Thanksgiving into an idol. And people are looking at the deviled eggs and they're looking at the ham, the deviled ham. Everything's deviled at Thanksgiving. And Jesus Christ is forgotten. And thanks is not truly given in most cases. I'm encouraging you to be real Christians and you follow God as dear children, innocent ones, way over there all by yourself, away from everybody else who calls themselves Christian. You walk with God. Hey, do you know if you walk with God, if you're right there with Him, There won't be too many other people there with you. It's a very, very thinned out crowd there in the presence of God. That's why I'm thankful for us and our group. We get together and our focus is the Lord Jesus Christ and his righteousness. What are we told? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not seek ye first the kingdom of God, accept his grace, and then just live in abject sin the best you can because grace covers it. Seek God and his righteousness, Lord. How, how can I be right for you today? I, I want to please your heart today. What can I do and what should I not do? Is that the prayer of your heart? Or are you just going to bore through and do your own thing there? Yeah. Raggedy Ann and Andy. I'm dressing up like Raggedy Ann and Andy today. Or whatever it is you dress up as. I am Elvis. You guys know he was a demonic. <sighs> they had clones of him, guys. The story goes on, man. You ought, to see the, you ought to see the videotape of him glitching in Iowa. It was Iowa or South Dakota, black and white film. And he's glitching, and that little girl looked at him and thought, what am I seeing? He was changing back into his demonic form. Even back in the 70s. The guy's evil. I'm dressing up like evil. You're dressing up like a demon. You're dressing up like Satan. Okay. Guys, walk with Jesus as dear children. Please, Jesus. Walk with him as dear, dear children. Verse 2. This is Ephesians 5, 2. And walk in love 
as Christ also hath loved us and given himself for us. That's what I'm doing right now. I am crying out saying, you do not love God if you serve the devil. Please love God, man. You'll wish you had at the judgment seat of Christ. There's going to be a whole bunch of people at the judgment seat of Christ. The greater section of this latter era, the church of Laodicea, if, if the, these people that are truly saved that go to heaven, who act just like Laodicea, who act just like Satanists, who act just like selfish, covetous folks, they're going to be in a larger crowd that is experiencing shame. And God says, dude, come over here. Come over here. Be dear children of the Lord. Follow him in righteousness. Follow him in love. And we're saying, guys, will you please love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? All of it. All of it. All of it. Not part times. You know, he gets 360. We'll give him 360. I get five days. A year. That's the way people do it, guys. And that's the way we're not supposed to do it. And we're hollering out. We're saying, guys, will you please love him? He, he's loved us so much, he gave himself for us an offering. He's offered himself in our place. God stepped forward and said, it's time for Johnny to die. It's time for Johnny to be tortured. It's time for Johnny, Johnny to be bled out and go straight to hell. Jesus stepped forward and says, how about if I do it in, in his place? I, we, we know that that sin has to be punished, just like you described, Father but I'll, I'll take the punishment for it. And he offered himself, what's the next line? A sacrifice. Number 16, when you guys see number 16 out there in the world, all around, John 3, 16, sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus, man. Follow him, know him, love him. He's so good. He's given himself for us an offering. He stepped in, stepped in the way of your bullet, stepped in the way of your death, your hell, and he rose so you could have life. Jesus took everything for us. Why don't we follow him as dear children, dear, loving, faithful children, and not rebellious ones who love the devil, who love ourselves? That's what Satan worship is. Go study Satan worship. Just Satanism 101. It's just loving yourself, serving yourself. You are God in Satanism. Do as thou wilt, please thyself. That shall be the whole of the law. The whole of the law of Satan's law is please yourself. Do whatever you want to please you. That's Satanism, and that's how Christians live. We oppose the living God. We never look to him in the, in the greater case, in the greater scenario, in the greater group. We never look to God and say, hey, Lord, what would you want me to do? I, I want to go ahead and die to myself like your scripture teaches, like Paul taught, to die daily. I don't want me resurrected. I blow everything that I touch. I ruin everything, okay? My game planning, my manipulations, my everything. I don't want me involved, Lord. I want that guy to stay in the grave. I want to be resurrected in your power and walk in your power today, your resurrection power. How can I please you? Seek ye God Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his righteousness, his righteousness. And the Christian church today, the greater part of the Christian church today doesn't care about his righteousness, doesn't care about his holiness, doesn't care about their, themselves being righteous and holy. And he's called us to be all that, be imitators of him as dear children, faithful children, not rebellious ones. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is a, as idolatry. People will make all excuses. Oh, we're not serving the devil today. We're going to dress up like Raggedy Ann and Andy. We're, we're going to dress up like uh, Baby Shark. We're, we're going to dress up like Jaws. We're, we're going to dress up like, and the list goes on and on and on. We're not serving Satan. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're putting on a mask. You're putting on uh, a costume. You're putting on the clothing of a hypocrite, uh, an actor. You're being something that you're not. And God says, never be something that I've not called you to be. Which is what? Holy. Be ye holy. That means separated totally with all of our parts unto God himself. Be holy as I am holy, he said. He didn't say act holy. He said be holy. From the integrity, from, from your guts, from your heart, from within working its way out. Be holy as I am holy. That's what he's called us to do. 365 days a year. And then when he corrects that calendar, 364. Amen? Amen. Keep reading. We're in Isaiah 5, verse 3. He, no, well, let's, let's read all of 2 again. 
and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice unto God for a sweet smelling savor to the Lord. When Jesus was dying as that burnt offering, it was like you going out on your front porch and cooking meats and smelling that fat. That's the way God smells a sacrifice, an honest sacrifice from a heart. And it was a sweet, savoring smell to the Lord that day as his son was dying. He was satisfied. Ah, now I can let Johnny and the rest of them go free if they'll believe. Jesus satisfied God that day and he's called us to be living sacrifices, to be a sweet smell in his nostrils today. Are you doing that? Are you partaking in the devil's game, the devil's day? I'm telling you, Halloween is strictly of the devil. And for you to a, kind of even have one little shade, we're going to have a costume. I'm going to add a little bit of this and that to it. And you include yourself in Halloween as Halloween and not a day that the Lord's made and you're going to rejoice and be glad in it. But you included yourself in, in a dress up. You're rebellious and you're of the devil. Absolutely of the devil. The Bible tells us so here. Keep reading. But fornication, verse 3, Ephesians 5, 3. But fornication in all uncleanliness or covetousness. Covetousness is my desire to, to uh, want more. I, I want to be the best at, at the costume. I want to have the best costume. I, I want more candy than the other guys got. I want to give out the best kind of candy. I want to be the favorite house on the block. I want kids to remember me. Covetous, desiring, desiring, desiring. Everything that God doesn't want you to desire. But fornication, it's incredible that he puts these together. Verse 3, fornication, that is sexual sin. Okay, any kind of sexual sin. The word is porne, porn. So it's soft porn or hard porn. Hardcore, softcore, it doesn't matter. It's porn. God hates you divulging and dancing with porn. The nakedness of others. The thought of the nakedness of others. God hates that with a passion. It grieves him. And we're told, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed until the day of redemption. Do not grieve God. And every Halloween, the Christian church jumps in there. I'm saying, for when it's on a Monday, they've done it since Friday night. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four days of feasting with the devil. Four days of a, a, a devil's dose. Woo, let's do that for Jesus. Jesus dressing up like Moses on Halloween. I'm, a, I'm dressing in my Christian gear. This year, Jesus is going to dress up like Noah. Can you see that? Or is that ridiculous? Or is that stupid? Or is that retarded? But fornication and uncleanness, what, what is uncleanness? Dirtiness, just being dirty about everything. Everything's, everything's a dirty joke. Somebody, that's what she said. Everything, you're turning everything into sin. You can no longer be righteous and holy in your thoughts. God says stay away from that kind of thinking. Be pure, be holy, be pleasing unto the Lord or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as become the saints. Do not talk about fornication. Do not think about fornication. That means get rid of your TV. All you Christians, good, wholesome Christians with filth coming through your televisions. God said, don't even talk about it, but you sat there and you watch it and you watch the reruns and you reorder it again on Netflix. God is sick of it, man. He is sick of the rebellion. He is sick of the stubbornness. He is sick of your witchcraft and your idolatry. And you don't even know that you're an idolater. And if you're an idolater, you're not worshiping Jesus. He will have no other gods before him, so where's he at in all this? You only care about yourself and culture. The culture that you're in, and you feel good about doing this stuff because culture, but meanwhile, God's over here just doing the exact opposite. And you have no vibe. You have no frequency with the Lord. You're not tuned in with him because you're not tuned into the Bible, and you don't care about his righteousness. You care about your fun. You, you, you care about your being satisfied ingratiated with the gifts of the world. You don't care nothing about God in his heart. You're a rebellious one. You are a devil worshiper. If you have anything to do with this day, you worship idols and idols are demons. And they all lead back to the devil himself. 
He is the one being worshipped today. If you have any inkling for these past four days, buzzing off on the candy, working your outfit, the devil, the, you are to wear a robe of righteousness at all times and practice righteousness and let the Lord's Spirit work in you and through you unto good works. Continuing on. Do not even talk about these things. Stay away from filthiness, talking, or jesting. That's sexually jesting. God is so sick of it. It's in the church. People do that in the church. Which are not convenient, but rather, why don't you, your, your game is to give thanks. We're to, in everything, give thanks. We are to pray always without stopping. We are to be living Christianly. We are to be living holy before a holy God and we're to maintain our service, which is thanksgiving and prayer. Not murmuring, complaining, whining, belly aching, getting depressed, complaining about everything going on around you and non-prayer. Verse five, for this you know that no whoremonger, that's somebody who hangs out with whores, who loves porn, who loves rated R flicks, who loves all those little Nephilim chicks dressed up in their scanty little outfits, who are superheroes. That's a whoremonger. That's hanging out with whores. That's la lavishing yourself with whoredoms. God talks about the attire of a harlot. The attire of a harlot is a slit up her leg. You can see her leg up to her thighs. And America, we go to church dressed like that because it's customary. It's our custom. It's what we do. God doesn't do it. He does righteousness. We better find out the culture of heaven and live accordingly. And that culture is holy. That culture is righteous. That culture doesn't worship idols and demons and people and characters and cartoons and video games. People spent hours and hours and hours killing people in video games. And God tells you, thou shalt not kill. And that goes right into their hearts. St mainstream killing. They take these 18-year-old kids, draft them. The kid that was best at the video games. And they have him operating the drones out there, sinking ships. Kill, kill, kill is in his heart. His, his reflexes, everything are perfect. Because he practiced at home since he was three killing folks with his dad. We need to be learning righteousness. And now that kid is working for Babylon. Babylon is the army of the world. Mystery Babylon. And these kids are chasing it down, man. It says, for you know, verse 5, this is Ephesians 5, 5, for you know that no whoremonger or unclean person or covetous man who's an idolater, desiring more and more and more, I want a bigger house, I want a bigger home, I, I want a prettier wife, I want this, I want that, I wish my husband was better, and you just desire everything else other than what God has placed in your lap, in your home, you want everything else other than that, you're an idolater, you are worshiping devils. Paul told us that 2,000 years ago in the book of Ephesians. No, co covetous people are idolaters. They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Okay? Now, we were all this at one time. We were all whoremongers. We were all idolaters. We were all sinners. And then we heard of one Jesus Christ who sought, he came to seek and to save the lost. And he saves those who will believe. And then we, as true believers, we decided, Lord, yes, this is the truth. I believe this truth. And we were saved. And we're sealed with the Holy Ghost. And we'll fall off the wagon once in a while and we'll sin. But we do not practice sin. The Holy Spirit will kind of rough us up a little bit on the inside. Now, you can go ahead and practice sin. And a lot, a lot of most Christians are. Most, most believers who are truly saved, they oppose the Holy Spirit at all times. And they wonder why they feel depressed. They wonder why they always got this, this thing going on and, and things just don't run smoothly. It's because they're fighting God. And if you'll just humble yourself before God, start living righteously and holy and seek His pleasure. Lord, how can I please you today? How can I not be an idolater, a whoremonger, an idol worshiper, covetous, 
desiring more, 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 that's an idol worshiper. The church is filled with idol worshipers. And we're calling you today to quit worshiping idols and worship God alone and him alone shall you serve and follow him as innocent dear children, not as stubborn animals, witches, warlocks, and demons themselves. Stubbornness, God hates it with a passion. He's looking for meek people who will willingly offer themselves immediately, yes, Lord, without fighting, without stiff-necking. The church is filled with those. Let no man deceive you, verse 6, with vain, empty words. You know, your pastors and your pulpits, they're deceiving you. They, they love their idols. They love their team and their mascot. They love their sports, and they love a variety of them. They, they have a favorite hockey team, a favorite football team, pro, a favorite college team or two. They love everybody who's playing their greatest enemy. And the list goes on and on and on. And they'll talk about that behind the pulpit on Sunday. They're idols. And to each individual idol players, the tight end, the split end, the quarterback, the running back, the kicker, it doesn't matter who they are. It's just individual gods that they serve and love and watch and desire to see every week. And they are more jacked up for kickoff opening kickoff than they are for church service and, and loving people and ministering unto people. Say it ain't so. Say I'm making all this up. You're a liar if you say that. You don't know what's going on. You are out of touch with what God knows and sees. And I'm encouraging you to get in touch. I'm encouraging you to find out what God wants. You go to your church next Sunday if we live that long and we're not raptured yet, and you listen to the conversation in the foyer we came to church to worship the living God and ain't nobody out there talking about God. Huh? Can somebody answer me and say, no, 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 not in our church. It's different. When we meet in the foyer on Sunday, we can't stop talking about the Lord Jesus before the church service starts. Or are you talking all about the football game yesterday and the barbecue and the hanging out and the tailgate and getting together with all the people and Jesus is nowhere to be found because you're an idol worshiper. You're a devil worshiper. You worship demons. You worship yourself there, Satanist. And God is sick and tired of it. And today is proof in the pudding. All the Christians celebrating Halloween in any form today, you are a devil worshiper. You are a God denier. You are rebellious, man. And you are stubborn and stiff-necked. And you oppose him and you are evil. And you are wicked in your showing all the world. You're not representing heaven and holiness and righteousness. You represent the devil. And I'm afraid in many cases it's your father, the devil. And you've not truly been saved if you have no conviction about these things. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 7. Be not, be therefore not partakers of them in any way. Don't you dare partake in Halloween in any way. Don't you partake in covetousness in any way. Don't you take in all these sins watching your, watching your cable TV and your Netflix and your pay-per-view, you know. Let's, what, what do we want to watch tonight? Sin, 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 sin. Ain't none of it brings glory to God. It all brings glory to the Antichrist and Satan himself. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. From the cartoons up. And you are too stupid to see that? Or do you see it and rebel against it? Which is it? Are you blind or rebellious? Continuing on. I've seen missionaries posting pics of their kids dressed up in an abomination. They spit in the face of our Lord. That's right, Vondo. That's what I see all the time. All these pastors and preachers and evangelists and everybody doing the same thing. Worshipping the devil on the day of the devil. And Anton LaVey told us that. He's been dead for years. And he's so grateful that the parents let their children worship the devil one day a year. It's more than that. But he really emphasized that Halloween is of the devil. We have two Bible codes saying that, guys. This is not just, oh, generality, the plain text. and No, you, you can make it say one thing, and, and I can make it say another in the plain text. And we, You ain't going to argue with God in his Bible code. He said, Satan is the God of Halloween. We're going to see that in a second. Verse 7, do not be partakers with them. Verse 8, Ephesians 5, 8. For you were sometimes in darkness, but now you're in the light of the Lord. So since that has happened, why don't you walk as children of light? Quit acting like the devil and the children of darkness. Verse 9, 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Read those three again. The fruit of the Spirit is in goodness, the true goodness of God. That, that's a fruit of the Spirit. Righteousness, that's all things right, pure, holy, and truth. What we're presenting tonight is truth. Absolute truth from the plain text. And we're about to show you two Bible codes. Okay? Verse 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The Bible does that. The fruit of the Spirit does that. The Holy Spirit in you will give you absolute peace on October 31st because you are living righteously, holy, and unto God. Or there will be a little bit of conflict, friction there. And it's going to be because you're fighting the Holy Spirit. You're rebelling. Or if you don't feel nothing at all, you're not saved. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit comes to convict the world of sin. If he's going to convict the world of sin, he's surely going to convict his children of sin. Amen? And have no fellowship. Verse 11. And have zero, nada, zippo, none, no fellowship with the works of darkness. What kind of works of darkness? The unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with the wicked. Have no fellowship with the devil and his crowd on Halloween. And the whole church said, I, I haven't read Ephesians in years. And some say, I've never read Ephesians in my life. And you've not listened to what the Lord said. And you've jumped right in there and you're partaking in the unfruitful works of the darkness when God said, do not have any partakings with the unfruitful work of the darkness. What's the next line? But rather expose them. Get on the Get on your YouTube, get on your Facebook, and expose it. Make it known that this is evil, man. From the top of your roof, pastors aren't even doing that. They're jumping in, not exposing the evil. Now, they'll expose the evils that they don't like, you know, abortion and homosexuality. But they won't expose the evils of Halloween and Christmas. That, that makes them a bunch of money and fun. They get fun and money off of that gig. God's called us to righteousness, and we are not to have any kind of doings, do not be partakers in their unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Expose the unfruitful works of darkness. Halloween is satanic. And if you are part of Halloween, you are a rebellious fool against God. And you need to repent. You need to fall on your face and say, oh God, I've been such a rebellious, stubborn fool. I've been an idol worshiper, a devil worshiper. And I confess that now I do not want to continue in this. I want to walk holy and please you 100 Help me do that, Lord Jesus. Continuing on. Verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. We have it brought right into our bedrooms and our televisions. The evil, the wickedness that we aren't even supposed to be partaking of. We're not even supposed to think about. We're not even supposed to conjure up any of these thoughts. And we're only feeding ourselves with this wickedness. We oppose God. We're rebellious. We're stubborn. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. This is your day, witch. This is your day, Christian witch, you rebellious one. For it is a shame even to speak of those things. Verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made known by the light of God's truth. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. We're, we're reproving the darkness right now. We're telling you that your jack-o'-lantern is satanic. There's nothing holy just tell me what's holy about your jack-o'-lantern. It's separated unto God. It's for his reasonable service. It's a living sacrifice, my jack-o'-lantern. Or is it not? The light reproves the truth, man. And I'm encouraging you to get over here in the light. Roaches hate light. They scatter. But those of us who are children of light, we love the light. We are children of the day and we love truth. We love righteousness. Even when it pimp slaps us in the face, we still love it and we make right our ship. We repent. And I'm encouraging you to do that. If you're part of the family of God, do that. Verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made known by the light. For whatsoever doth make known is light. Wherefore, verse 14, we're in Ephesians 5, 14. Wherefore he saith, awake you sleeper. This church, church age is not, has knotted off, dead asleep. We see it in the Old Testament. We see the prophets 700 years before Jesus saying, wake a sleeper, wake a sleeper, wake up, wake up people, wake up. And here we are saying it 2,700 years later, will you please wake up? 
You're not awake. You're dead asleep. You love darkness. You fade it off. You, you watch TV. You don't read your Bibles. You listen to secular satanic music. Guys, <laughs> what's her freaking name? Taylor, what, what's, what is it? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. If you listen to any of her music, do you not understand that she is the high priest, priestess in Satanism in Hollywood's circle? Long blonde hair. Everything she says is all about Satan. Taylor Swift. She's a Satanist. And all her music has to do with Satanism. You, re you listen to the lyrics. You, you just read the lyrics of this latest album she's come out with. It's all about Antichrist. It's all about the evil. It's all about the rising up of the evil one. And Great Depression happening after the rapture. She's satanic and Christians just crank her up. Come on, kiddies. Let's sing along with the devil. The high priest is Satan. She hates Jesus. Sing loud. Stupid retards. Verse 14. Wherefore he saith, awake you sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Do you want to, to please the Lord? Do you want to know his truth? Open up that Bible, pray, say, Lord God, give me the light right now. I want to know your truth. I want everything that's manifested in righteousness to be made known around me. If there's any evil in me, Lord, David prayed this 3,000 years ago. Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me, Lord. You let me know if there's any wickedness in me and I'll repent and I'll change it. Please shine the light on me. That's the word of God. That's letting the Holy Spirit speak and do his way and have his bidding in your life. Verse 15, see then that you do not walk circumspectly. That's, or, or see that you do, do walk circumspectly. That's wise and cautiously. Every step you take, be wise and cautious, circumspect with that, but not as fools, be wise. Verse 16, you must redeem the time because the days are evil. Do not let another second go that you're in neutral for Satan. Neutral is satanic. We are advancing. We are ever moving forward. We are steadfast, unmovable, abounding. We are taking steps forward. We are going f toward the prize of our high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We are going toward the finish line. We are walking. We are advancing. We are Because Jesus advances. He walks. And we're called like Enoch to walk with God. We're called like Adam to walk with God. We're called like Abraham to walk with God. Enoch walked with God and he was raptured. It'd be a great thing instead of Serving Satan in a costume, a hypocrite uniform, when Jesus raptures you, it would be much better to be walking holy with him. Walking with God, not walking in opposition to God. Redeem the time because the days are evil. And what is that in verse 16? You need to be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, and, and just offer yourself wholly unto the Lord as he did for you. Verse 17, wherefore, be not unwise, but you must understand what the will of the Lord is. Read your Bible. Believe the truth when the truth comes your way. When the light is exposed in your darkness and you see roaches all around you, it's time to get the roach motel out. It's time to get rid of the roaches. It's time to get rid of the sin. It's time to get rid of everything that easily besets you. Lay aside every weight and sin. There's a lot of stuff that's not deep, dark sin, but there's a lot of stuff that you do in your day that weighs you down. Soccer practice, running around, taxi, and this and that gets you nowhere with the Lord. God's calling us unto his righteousness. Live holy. All right, let's look at these. Uh, Sean did these codes, man, way back, 2017. Okay, 2017. Let's look at this code. What does it say? It says Halloween is satanic. That is the main term. Halloween is satanic. Let's see how many skips that is. It's on a skip of 119,513. That's 9-11 backwards, 11-9 forwards. Hmm, could that be November 11 or no November 9th? I don't know. You guys know there's an eclipse coming up. There's an eclipse coming up on election day and there has never been a full blood red moon eclipse on the election day, but it is on this one, November 8th. 
November 7th. It begins November 7th and comes into the morning of November 8th. We will see it in the central time zone and we won't see it complete itself. It will have set before it has completed itself. But we will be able to see the full blood moon just as it starts to fade out, we will miss it. And the people in the West will get to see it all. It's coming up then. God speaks in the sun, moon, and stars. And the blood moon is a message, according to uh, Mark Biltz and his studies and, and what the Israelites have always said, messages from the moon are for Israel. And the message from, from the sun is to Gentiles. Okay? And there's that blood moon, full blood moon coming up on the 8th. Election Day in America. Now, guys, t tomorrow, today, right now, in Israel is Election Day there. November 1st is Election Day in Israel. November 8th, a week later, is here. They plan everything by the stars. They plan everything according to Satan and his ways. And they have received a ton of glory and empowerment from everybody in the world celebrating Halloween. The devil gets all that glory. The devil gets all that glory, and God gets none of it. And you and I are called to glorify the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make my mouth boast in the Lord, and the humble will hear thereof. And we're to be praising God continually at all times. But not on Halloween. The Christians want to praise the devil. And I'm telling you, that is exactly what's happening. And I'm encouraging you to repent. So here's this code from October 31st, 2017. Vondos put it up here. Halloween is satanic. Can you all read in English? And he said this over 119,000 skips. So you can't just say, oh, that, that's fluky. And, and that's, you can't say that about the plain text telling you this, that Halloween is evil. But we don't have the words Halloween is evil. But we do in the coded text. It says Halloween is satanic. It's his thing. It's his day. He gets the glory. And he rejoices when the Christians jump in and do -si do right along with the devils. What else does it say? Halloween is satanic. Is not of Yeshua the deceitful day of the enemy. Every Christian, every one of you who have partaken in this, you have been deceived. Because you are blind and ignorant and you don't care about the heart and love of God. You don't care about his righteousness. You don't care about his feelings. Why do you have feelings? Because you're made in the image of God who has feelings. He feels. And you have hurt his heart by being deceived by the devil because you won't listen to him when he told you, be not deceived. God is not mocked. But you went ahead and you, you went, you're, you're deceived anyway. This it says, Halloween is satanic and it is not of Yeshua. It is not of Jesus. This code says that. Plainly, the deceitful day of the enemy, they will bring their deceit. Anybody who, partake, who, who partook in this, you've been deceived. You're a deceived one. You are not a hot, heavy, on fire follower of Jesus. You're a deceived fool. And we're begging you to jump out of that and recognize it today and say, oh, Lord, I've been a deceived fool. I had no idea. Or you, I did have an idea and I've just been a rebellious idiot. And I'm sorry for being a rebellious idiot. Lord, keep me from that. Walk in his righteousness. And uh, their deceit and his evil adversary. God, Jesus' evil adversary is Satan. And you glorified him today. You glorified him these last four days. If you had anything to do with Halloween from a jack-o'-lantern up, you have been deceived and you have followed Satan because Jesus himself, God himself told us in his word, his Bible code, that Halloween is satanic and it is not of Jesus. What are you going to do with that? I encourage you to believe it. It's a threat from the devil. It's horror from the devil. It is Built up in Rome. Rome celebrates Halloween. They worship the devil there at the Vatican. Okay? Rome gave this to us. You are following the devil. You are following the spirit of Antichrist. You are following the deceitful works and the world of Babylon. And it shouldn't be a mystery. We've been screaming it here for years. And so have others. You've embraced a lie. You French kissed the devil, and we're encouraging you to repent. The root of them is witchcraft. 
Witchcraft is the entire image of Halloween. And what is that? You rebelling against God. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And this Bible code has been available to us since on this very date, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, five years ago today, this code was available. And for five years, you could have seen that this is all of the devil. Halloween is satanic. It is not of Jesus. And you are deceived if you partake in it. And the whole image of Halloween from your pumpkin up is a deception of the devil. And it says right here, it's witchcraft. All of it. Any little iota that you took part in Halloween, you are a witch. God says, and burn the witches. Do not allow a witch to live. I'm encouraging you to step out of that and give yourself holy unto God's holiness. All right, let's look at the next one. He did this one a year later, a week before Halloween, okay, four years ago. The God of Halloween is Satan. The skips, there are what? Let's see here, blow that up a little bit. 86,406. So every 86,406 skips through the Bible, God is telling us that Halloween is satanic. Okay? Let's see what he says the code interpretation is. The God of Halloween is satanic. The date of this day is concerning you, the 31st. The 31st, it's either all for Jesus or for the devil. And if you had a pumpkin involved, a jack-o'-lantern, and a little bit of trinkets here and some candy, and you're thinking about Halloween and boo, scaring somebody, you're a witch. You are a rebellious witch against God because this thing is of the devil. The God of Halloween is Satan. Hasatan is the Hebrew term. Hasatan is Satan. The date of this day is concerning you, Hasatan, for the day. It's his day, it's his day, it's a day of death. It's not a day for Jesus. Jesus is the life. Give us eternal life. He's the resurrection and the life. In him is no death at all. You're glorifying the devil today. You're a devil worshiper. You are an idol worshiper, and God has noted it. I trust you're saved. I pray that you're saved, that you're just beguiled, and you've been fooled, and you've been deceived, and not the fact that you are truly lost worshiping the devil. It's a day of death. So all the people in all Israel understood that day. He brings it forth like this. The people will blaspheme. If you have committed any kind of celebratory acts or any favors toward Halloween in these last four days or longer, you are blasphemous in the eyes of God. You have blasphemed his holy name. You have stomped all over the blood of Jesus because Halloween is not of Jesus, he told us in this code. It's of Hasatan, Satan. The people will blaspheme. Death is exalted. The fear of them has fallen upon the peoples. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. God does not want us to be afraid. God does not like fear. God does not like haunted houses. He does not like your little kids dressing up like ghosts. The only ghost we are familiar with is the Holy One, and every other ghost is unholy. It's blasphemous against the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to encourage you to repent. I'm going to encourage you to confess to God, I have been a rebellious witch. I have been a fool. I have been a stubborn idol worshiper God. I know that Halloween is not of you. It is of the devil. We see it twice in two Bible codes, two witnesses. It is of Hasatan. It is of Satan. It is blasphemy against you, God. I have blasphemed your holy name. And you better confess that and repent that tonight. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, he's done that to every believer. All your sin, even the sinful blasphemy you've committed in these last four days and more. If you're saved, they've already been under the blood. But you continue to blaspheme the holy name of Jesus being a saved one. And when you meet him at the judgment seat of Christ, you will have nothing because the Bible says concerning sinners who are idolaters, they will have no reward in the kingdom of heaven. And many Christians who are idolaters, stubborn, who worship the devil, who celebrate Halloween, are going to have, they're going to lose all their rewards in heaven. They'll have heaven. They'll have Jesus. They'll have, uh, they'll be joint heirs with Christ. 
but there were awards and rewards that God intended for you to have that you forfeited because of your blasphemy and rebellion, because of your witchcraft, because of your sorcery, because you worshiped and honored and loved Satan, and you didn't care that it, this day had nothing to do, as far as Halloween goes, with Jesus. And we're encouraging you to get on track with the Lord Jesus Christ. You get in the light. You have no works of darkness. Do not embrace the works of darkness. Do not celebrate the works of darkness. Do not let all the... That's what Christmas is all about. People come inside their house, dim the lights, and turn on the Christmas tree lights. And in that darkness, we are worshiping an idol. And God's called you out of that. Out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Will you come out here with us in the marvelous light of God? Will you honor his holiness? Will you quit blaspheming him, you rebellious witch? Guys, this is deep stuff we're talking about. And God has plainly told us in his Bible code not to do it. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in the wickedness, in any kind of wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee, Lord. That's the verse that's in this Bible code. Read that again. Thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Halloween's wicked, satanic, witchcraft. Neither shall evil dwell with him. Hmm. Proverbs 8.36 but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love Halloween. They love death. All they that hate me, God says, th that's wisdom speaking, personified, Jesus Christ. All they that hate my wisdom. What has been preached tonight has been the wisdom of God, the light. And if you hate what we have preached tonight and you rolled your eyes a little bit, you hate God you hate Jesus. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me, you love death. Everybody who loves Halloween hates Jesus. Everybody. God said so. Wisdom has cried out her voice until her throat is sore. Will you listen? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And you can, what's so cool about God? is October 31st is not over. You can redeem the time. You can realize what you're hearing is wisdom from God's holy light, His holy truth, His word, both the plain text and the coded one. The coded one really laid it out plainly. You can't argue with it. There's nothing to argue. You're serving Satan if you serve this day. If you've honored death, skeleton, zombies, you hate God. The plain text in Proverbs has always said that. 3,000 years running. All they that hate me love death, says God. I'm going to encourage you to take this opportunity to repent and say, Hey, Lord, thank you for giving me the opportunity to repent immediately. I wasn't even aware of, this, of the just sinfulness in my life. My rebellion my stubbornness, my witchcraft. I wasn't even, it just, it just didn't even cross my mind. And it has now, and I, I repent, Lord. I, I come to you. I want only holiness. I want only righteousness. Will you pray to him? Confess your sinfulness and say, I want to be a 100-folder for you, Lord. I want you to find me being righteous and not unholy. I want you to find me loving your life, your eternal life, and loving the lives of others and despising death. The last enemy the Bible tells us that death is the enemy of God. His enemy, and you are praising it? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Why don't you let that enemy be destroyed in your life right now? You cry out to God in mercy and confession, and God will write it immediately. And then you get on your housetop, and you begin to shed the light on everybody else, and you tell them, you warn them about the next holidays coming up. Thanksgiving and Christmas. They're godless. They're godless. They're godless. They're godless. It's all idol worship because Jesus isn't involved. Other things are involved. Everything else is involved, but, you know, not Jesus. And when everything else is involved and not Jesus, you're an idol worshiper. You're covetous. You want more than God. And God's enough, guys. 
I'm going to encourage you to repent tonight. I'm going to encourage you to get your heart and your life in line with the scriptures, both the plain text and the Bible code. You've seen it clearly. Vondo has put them up here on our site. Both of those Bible codes that we went through tonight where God curses Halloween and says it's of Satan and not of himself and says you're deceived if you have partaken. It also says that you hate him if you have honored death. Repent. Turn to him. He will abundantly pardon. He, he, he will forgive you as though it never happened. Let it happen. I love you, man. I love you with all my heart. That's why we preach this tonight. I'm tired of seeing Christians deceived. And you know why they're deceived? Because they want to be. I'm praying that you no longer want to be deceived, but you're going to give your heart wholly and solely to the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him hard all your days. We may not have many steps left to the finish line. But praise God, you can get in step with the Lord Jesus and the rest of us who have a desire to walk holy with him. Let's walk together, let's encourage each other, and let's cross that finish line together 100% to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and give him all the glory and give the devil none. God bless you. Do not walk in darkness. Expose it. That's the job of the Christian. I love you, man. God bless.